Ellen Keller's life is an excellent example of ideal parenthood. Mahu was Helen Keller's caretaker. Higher studies of Helen Keller. Sven Helen Keller's first speech. Works by Helen Keller. Eight political economic and social economic views of Helen Keller. When did Helen Keller die, Ten? What lessons can we learn from the life of Helen Keller? On June 27, 1880, in Tuscumbia, Alabama, was the daughter of Captain Arthur H. Keller and Kate Adams Keller. She was born with full sight and hearing, but lost both senses. After a severe illness at the age of 19 months, despite her disabilities, Helen's childhood was filled with love and support from her family. At the age of six, Helen's parents sought the help of Anne Sullivan, a visually impaired instructor who taught her the manual, alphabet and braille. With Anne's dedicated guidance, Helen learned to communicate with the world through touch and sound and later went on to receive a formal education at the Perkins School for the Blind. Helen Keller's life is an incredible testament to the power of perseverance and determination, serving as an inspiration to parents and caregivers worldwide. Her family's unwavering support and Anne Sullivan's dedication played a significant role in shaping Helen into the remarkable individual she became. After completing her basic education, Helen Keller moved on to higher studies, attending Radcliffe College and graduating with honors in 1904. Despite facing numerous challenges, she continued to pave the way for individuals with disabilities to pursue higher education. Helen Keller's first speech delivered President Newman. Thank you, President Mehta. I desire to present to you shortly one who is known worldwide for her contribution to the blind, delegates and ladies. She comes from a state that boasts of many distinguished citizens, but none as distinguished as Helen Keller. Thank you. President Newman. For over 20 years, Helen Keller has kept her hand on my face a good deal of the time, feeling the vibrations of my voice, putting her finger in my mouth and feeling my tongue, and imitating the positions and repeating them over and over until at last you can hear her speak words that you can understand. I can't think of anything. I want to ask you if you can think of anything more to your heart's desire than helping this brave girl to put forth a great project. She has overcome tremendous obstacles. People always love those who overcome great obstacles. Can you think of anyone who has overcome greater obstacles? Anyone whom you would more desire to help carry through a great work. She is going to ask you now in her own words. Dear lions and ladies, 
I suppose you have heard the legend that represents opportunity as a capricious lady who knocks on every door but once. And if the door isn't open quickly, she passes on never to return. And that is as it should be. Lovely, desirable ladies won't wait. You have to go out and grab them. I am your opportunity. I am knocking at your door. I want to be adopted. The legend doesn't say what you are to do when several beautiful opportunities present themselves at the same door. I guess you have to choose the one you love best. I hope you will adopt me. I am the youngest here and what I offer you is full of splendid opportunities for service. Try to imagine how you would feel if you were suddenly speaking blind today. Picture yourself stumbling and groping at noonday as in the night. Your work, your independence gone. You have heard how from the fingers of another a ray of light from another soul touched the darkness of my mind and I found myself, found the world, found God. It is because my teacher learned about me and broke through the dark silent imprisonment which held me that I am able to work for myself and others. The opportunity I bring to you, lions, is this. Will you not help me hasten the day when there will be no preventable blindness? No little deaf blind child untaught. No blind man or woman unaided. I appeal to you, lions, you who have your sight, you who are strong and kind and brave. Will you not constitute yourselves as knights of the blind in the crusade against darkness? Thank you. Helen Keller authored several books, including her autobiography, The Story of My Life, and The World I Live In along with countless articles and essays on topics ranging from social issues to women's suffrage and pacifism. She was a staunch advocate for the rights of people with 
disabilities and a passionate speaker on political and social economic issues, Helen Keller breathed. Her last on June 1st, 1968, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire generations. Her remarkable journey teaches us valuable lessons about resilience, determination, and the power of the human spirit to overcome adversity. In the next episode, we will delve into the life and contributions of Louis Braille, another remarkable individual who has left an indelible mark on history.